What's up Guardians? Profane here. Thanks for checking out the video. If you're a new or returning player coming back into Destiny for the release of Into the Light and you want your Warlock to be all it can be, then you have come to the right place. Because today we're going to be checking out the top 7 best Warlock builds that will dominate at any level of difficulty during Season of the Wish and Into the Light. Each of these builds have unique ways of displaying their superiority, and even though we're in a season that caters heavily to strand and solar builds, we have a mixture of all energy types that'll suit whatever activity you're jumping into. Because of how this season's artifact mods function, it can actually be more advantageous to have a hybrid approach to your loadouts and builds. So even if you're running a stasis build, for example, you could still take advantage of several solar artifact mods. As an example, Flint Striker will give you Radiance with solar weapons, even when not on a solar build. So just by running a solar weapon, you'd be able to trigger a 20% damage bonus and the ability to pierce barrier shields, adding an extra level of versatility to pretty much any build this season. There's a ton of really strong Warlock exotics out there, so it was really tough to narrow these down into just 7. So if we do skip over your favorite builds and exotics, then be sure to let us know down in the comments. And without further ado, let's jump into it. The first build that we're going to check out is an Arc build that revolves around the use of the Fallen Sunstar. This build will excel at providing ability energy to you and everyone else on the team. We'll have a ton of Arc Souls, giving everyone increased damage. And since we'll be able to blind and jolt targets, we'll have a ton of handy weapons to use against large crowds of enemies. The Fallen Sunstar comes with the intrinsic trait called Ionic Conductor. Ionic Traces will move faster and grant bonus energy. And when you collect Ionic Traces, teammates will also gain ability energy. Each Ionic Trace will provide us with 25% melee and grenade energy, 30% class ability energy, and they'll provide teammates with 10% extra energy across the board. You'll want to run the Arc Soul and Electrostatic Mind aspects with this build, and when it comes to fragments, it'll really depend on what Arc weapons you're using, and whether or not you're using a special Arc weapon. If you are, then Spark of Beacons and Brilliance will be fragments to consider. Otherwise, Spark of Amplitude, Magnitude, and Shock are all great fragments to use with the Fallen Sunstar. Since they create their own Ionic Traces, exotic weapons like the Cold Heart or the Delicate Tomb would pair up very nicely with this build, but I'm more partial to the use of the Trinity Gold or the Centrifuge. Legendary weapons that feature Volt Shot would also synergize really well with this build. This would also give you a secondary option of stunning Overload Champions. The next build that we're going to look at is a multi-purpose agnostic build featuring the Necrotic Grips. This exotic transcends the barriers of any one specific energy and instead directly influences the power of your melee. The Necrotic Grips comes with the Grasp of the Devourer intrinsic trait, which adds a poisoning effect against your targets when you strike them with a melee. This poison will continuously damage those enemies, and when they die, that poison will get spread to any nearby enemy. This can have a substantial impact on how much damage you can inflict against groups of enemies, or just a single high-value target. The Necrotic Grips has the greatest influence when used with Arc, Solar, and Strand subclasses, as these energies come with high-powered melee options that already have the ability of inflicting a lot of damage to large groups of enemies. When used with a Solar subclass, you're getting the added benefits of scorching and igniting targets. With Arc, you're able to spread lightning damage, and with Strand, you're able to unravel targets create Threadlings, and deal out tons of area damage. Whichever subclass you decide to utilize, you'll want to choose Fragments and Aspects that cater to the use of your charged melee. And when it comes to weapons that will pair up with the Necrotic Grips, any of the Weapons of Sorrow will give you a lot of added benefits, with most of them having their own poisoning effects. There's the Thorn, the Osteostriga, the Touch of Malice, 
and the Necrochasm, and they're all going to synergize extremely well. I also really like adding the Monte Carlo into these builds, since it helps regenerate your charged melee. You'll also want to look for legendary weapons that come with perks like Grave Robber or Pugilist, which will play right into your increased melee use. Up next, we're checking out the Nezarek Scent. We'll mostly focus around this exotic synergy with a Voidwalker subclass, but it's worth noting that this exotic can be an amazing option on just about any subclass, especially with Strand this season. As long as you're using a predominant mix of Void weapons, you're pretty much free to use any subclass. But when used on a Voidwalker, will have so many amazing benefits that's going to help during Grandmasters, Raids, or in Onslaught. We'll be able to give ourselves Devour, providing us with health and grenade energy. We'll be able to keep our enemies weakened and debuffed and in constant duress because of our Onslaught of abilities. The Nazarick Sin gives us the Abyssal Extractor's intrinsic trait. So whenever we defeat enemies with Void abilities or weapons, we'll trigger a bonus to the regeneration rate of our melee, our Grenade, Super, and Class ability energy. This grants a 300% bonus to Grenades and Melees, and it grants a 200% increase to Class ability and Super regen. The Graviton Lance has always been a superior choice to use with Nezarek Scent because of its ability to trigger Void Explosions. Luminarch is another great exotic option. Legendary weapons with either Repulsor Brace or Destabilizing Rounds would also be great options. With the Child of the Old Gods aspect, we'll give ourselves a small Void Buddy that will weaken enemies, and it's actually extremely effective, especially since we'll have increased class ability energy allowing us to generate these more often. It'll grant us health and grenade energy as it's weakening those targets, and once defeated, we'll gain additional class ability energy off of each enemy, which will play right into our use of Nezarek Scent, giving us a tremendous level of uptime on all of our abilities, and giving us a lot of overwhelming power to use in Grandmasters and Raids, and I have no doubt that it'll be effective in Onslaught. Since our Void Buddy will weaken targets for us, we don't necessarily have to sacrifice 20 points in our Discipline just to use Echo of Undermining. So instead, we could give our Void Weapons Volatile Rounds after defeating enemies with those grenades by using Echo of Instability. We'll make the effects of our grenades last longer by using Echo of Remnants, and with Echo of Harvest, we'll generate bonus orbs whenever defeating weakened targets, helping us and allies regain abilities and super energy. But the key in using this build properly, no matter what class you're on, is by using void weapons. And when on a void walker, using those abilities. So don't hold back, let them fly. The next build we're gonna look at is a complete support build that revolves around the use of the Cenotaph. And it's only gonna be beneficial in team settings when you have a lot of high ranking enemies so I think this will be especially beneficial when Onslaught and the Pantheon release. This is an extremely unique exotic that comes with the high priority intrinsic trait. This does require the use of a trace rifle, but as a reward, you'll have your magazine steadily reloaded. And when you deal damage with those trace rifles against any high valued target, like a boss, a champion, tormentor, or any other tier four or higher enemy, that enemy will become highlighted Targets will remain highlighted for 10 seconds, but that can be re-triggered by landing 5 more shots with your Trace Rifle. When those highlighted targets are defeated by allies, they'll generate special ammo for us, and heavy ammo for teammates. And what's even more interesting about the Cenotaph is that if multiple players are using it, you'll be able to double highlight targets, receiving double the amount of ammo. It also would work nicely if a teammate would run an Aeon Cult exotic, so that when they finish those high-ranking enemies, they'll generate bonus ammo bricks. Since the Cenotaph doesn't revolve around any specific abilities, it can be used with any subclass, and with any Trace Rifle. On a solar build, with Prometheus Lens, this would absolutely crush opponents when adding in Kindling Trigger, Flint Striker, and Rays of Precision off of the Seasonal Artifact. The Divinity will make a perfect matchup with any subclass, especially when in raid and dungeon encounters, where you and your teammates will need that heavy ammo. 
The Aegir Scepter would be a terrific option with a stasis build to keep everything slowed and frozen, and it would make up for that lackluster super. But the mixture of the Navigator and the Cenotaph on a strained build is one of the more support-driven combinations that will really excel this season. The Navigator is able to provide you and a teammate with Woven Mail, giving you and them a 40% damage resistance bonus. And when used against enemies, it causes them to become severed, reducing that enemy's damage output by 40%. It also creates Tangle Anchors that you could use to continuously chain grapples. So it might not be as flashy as some of the other builds on this list, but you're not only supporting your team by providing an abundance of ammo, but you're also helping everyone's chances of staying alive. Since the Cenotaph doesn't play directly into any subclass, you'll have more freedom to assign fragments and aspects that cater to your specific playstyle. But since our goal is to help support the team, we focused heavily into suspensions with this build so that we can have better crowd control capabilities. When it comes to armor mods, I would recommend adding on some reserve and scavenger mods so that you'll get more ammo. To make it easier on grabbing ammo, I always find the legendary weapons with shoot to loot to be a great option to pair up with whatever trace rifle I'm running. Like I said before, this is definitely not the flashiest of builds, but it is one of the strongest because of its ability to continuously generate special and heavy ammo for the entire team. The next build that we're going to check out is another support build, but unlike the Cenotaph, which provided support through ammo, this stasis build provides its support by keeping your enemy stuck in place with constant streams of freezing effects. The Osmium Monsi has never been as effective as it is this season because of the inclusion of artifact mods like Pillar of Ice, Dragon's Bite, and Hail the Storm, which are all going to give us extra stasis crystals that deal bonus damage, and they're also going to provide us with an abundance of resistance. With Osmium Monsi, we get Fervid Cold Snap, which gives us a second Cold Snap grenade charge, and with the Bleak Watcher turret also equipped, we'll be able to keep even champions subdued under our slow and freezing abilities. We could use the Ice Flare Bolts aspect, which would expand our ability to freeze targets, but I do really like the use of Glacial Harvest, because then it allows us to use Whisper of Rhyme. This way we'll have a constant source of health regeneration and stasis overshields to keep us alive in the more challenging activities. Since the seasonal artifact lets us generate a ton of crystals, we can also make use of Whisper of Chains and Whisper of Shards. This way we can increase our grenade regen when we destroy crystals, and when we're near crystals or frozen enemies, we'll have increased damage resistance by 40%. The Osmium Monsi doesn't necessarily demand for any particular exotic weapon to be used, but the Aegir Scepter does make up for the lackluster Tier 1 Super, the Verglas Curve, or the Cryothesia would also be nice options to give us extra stasis crystals. Since the Osmium Monsi does focus around grenade use, having legendary weapons with Demolitionist will be a good idea. And to play into our stasis energy, weapons with Cold Steel, Headstone, or Chill Clip would also be great options. We'll need to make sure that we maintain high discipline with this build, and that we focus a lot of our armor mods towards grenade regen, so that we can always have those cold snap grenades at the ready. And now we dip our toes into the final two, and we're checking out the Sun Bracers. And I'm sure it's no surprise to anyone to see this exotic on the list. It's an absolutely amazing exotic that lets the Solar Warlock completely melt enemies in just seconds. But this Sun Bracers solar build fall short of the number one slot because of a couple of issues. It's sort of a glass cannon. It's super powerful, but it's also easy to lose your rotation when you might have teammates who are also fighting for kills. The Sun Bracers are also a little less user friendly, putting many players into uncomfortable territory as you have to either be in the air in order to trigger the benefits of heat rises, or you have to learn how to properly bunny hop while also aiming down sights. The Sun Bracers also require you to first defeat an enemy with your melee, and this won't always be so easy when facing in-game content. But when you're free to get those kills, it's like poetry. With Touch of Flame, in combination with Ember of Char, Ember of Ashes, and Ember of Resolve, you'll become nearly indestructible as you rain down Brimstone. 
What's nice about the Sun Bracers is that if you can get the loop down, it's a completely self-sufficient build that can import any type of weapon loadouts. Ideally, you would want to look for weapons that come with incandescent so that you can maximize on your ability to keep enemies scorched. To that extent, exotic weapons like the Polaris Lance, the Skyburner's Oath, or the Sunshot have been absolutely phenomenal with the Sun Bracers this season. But like I said before, it's much better suited when you're running activity solo. And we finally made it to the end. El Numero Uno, the very best Warlock build in Season of the Wish. This is the ultimate build to immobilize your targets, to support your team, and to dominate at any level of content. The Swarmer's Broodweaver Strand build is a truly unstoppable force. Destroying Tangles spawns Threadlings, and those little green bastards are going to unravel targets. We can use the Swarmers with the Wanderer aspect to give those Tangles the ability to suspend targets. And with Mindspun Invocation, we could greatly increase our ability to keep our targets suspended as our little green Threadlings go to town. But we could also use Weave Walk to give ourselves a failsafe as this will give us a huge damage resistance bonus whenever we're in this semi-invisible state. With fragments like Thread of Warding, we can also maintain Woven Mail to provide us with another 40% damage resistance bonus. With Thread of Continuity, our enemies will remain suspended for a longer duration, and with Thread of Mind, we'll be able to create bonus orbs whenever defeating suspended enemies, helping us and allies regain abilities faster. There is a pretty heavy focus around grenade use with any Broodweaver setup, so having maxed out discipline will be crucial, and it's for that reason that Thread of Generation would be a great option with this build, along with armor mods that increase our grenade regen. Adding in legendary strained weapons with hatchlings will give us even more of those little rats to torment our enemies with. Slice would also be a great weapon perk to have on those strained weapons, since it reduces your enemy's damage output by 40%, just like the Navigator does. And when it comes to exotics, even with a nerf, the Quicksilver Storm is still going to be an amazing option, and so is the Final Warning, or the Wish Keeper. The Wish Keeper in particular is going to be a great option when it comes to Onslaught, since we'll be able to set those traps and immobilize more enemies. And like I said, there's still the Navigator, that would be a great option to share that woven mail to teammates. With an army of little green rats and the power to keep your enemies immobilized and suspended, there's no better warlock build than the swarmers right now, especially when you add in the seasonal artifact mods of unraveling orbs, dragon spite, and horde shuttle. And remember, if we are using flint striker along with a couple of solar weapons, we'll be able to continue to receive that radiance, giving any of our weapons a 20% increase in damage. And with that, we have now completely covered the top 7 best Warlock builds that will dominate in PvE during Season of the Wish and Into the Light. So if you're a Warlock looking for a strong build to take into Onslaught or to take into the Pantheon, you'll have 7 amazing options that are going to give you a ton of success. And I'm including the Destiny Item Manager links for each of these builds down in the description below. And with that, I wish you all the best of luck out there. Let me know your thoughts about the release of Into the Light and what your favorite Warlock build is so far. Let us know down in the comments below. Thank you as always for checking out the video. If you enjoyed and found it helpful, then be sure to hit that like button below, along with the subscribe button if you're new. Both are greatly appreciated and both really do help support the channel. If you're a new Light Guardian just starting your journey, or a battle hardened veteran just looking for a new home, then be sure to check out the Discord link in the description below and join one of the greatest communities in all of Destiny. And until next time, Guardians, this has been Profane, wishing you all some happy hunting.